All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is your brother Shamak out of the Great Millstone Atlanta camp. Before I get started, I want to give all the glory. Infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rachakwadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name, and His only begotten Son's true name being Yahweh Shai, both in the Hebrew language of whom the world incorrectly and ignorantly called God and Jesus Christ. Also, I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well and who are true leaders of the Hebrew Israelites within these last days. Also, I want to give a shalom to the hopefully elect that are scattered all across the four corners of the world. All right, a shalom. Okay, so here with a lesson concerning of the uh, truly the aftermath of what took place with Hurricane Helen and just uh, emphasizing on two cities that were particularly hit pretty hard, you know, and that being Asheville, North Carolina, and also Augusta, Georgia. All right, and you see I have the article pulled up here for Augusta, and I have one pulled up touching on North Carolina. Okay, so this first with Augusta, you see the uh, one, this, and this, this is just one article. Let me go back. Let me go back and see if, if what comes up. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I mean, this one This one caught my eye, so I'm, I'm going to stick with this one. All right. So the Augusta Chronicle, it says total damage from Hurricane Helen reaches 417 million all right so that's that's the that's resource that's the that's that put that basically put the city at a at a uh uh back to, that backs the city up man homes damage stores damage okay resources damaged okay it says that and it's also expected to grow substantially okay so and then they still you got they got the national guard members clearing it out and uh for clearing out you know the the mess that Hurricane Helen, you know, that, that it caused, okay? And this is truly the Lord that has done this damage. The Lord is in control of bringing these types of storms, these types of winds, these types of destructions to these particular cities because these are the plagues of the Most High. We're in the last days, okay? That's why it's time to wake up your, to your true nationality, your true identity of being a Hebrew Israelite. If you are a Negro, Latino, Native American, this is time to wake up. We are in, we are in scary times, all right? If you think this that the Hurricane Helen was bad, hey, wait till you see what else is is on the way. All right, according to what is prophesied in the Holy Bible, okay, more death, more destruction, okay, more inconveniences to your livelihood. All right, look at it. It says roughly two hundred thousand Georgians are still without power, and that's a fact. We we that's a that's a well known fact. We got we got uh contact with brothers that within that city, man. All right. Uh, with the power being out more than a week, all right. That's that's with food going bad. The is is it's either it's either hot as hell, all right, because we you know we're in, we're in the fall season, okay. So it can get hot, all right. We're in the south, all right. It says Georgians are two hundred thousand Georgians are still without power one week after Hurricane Helen made landfall in Florida and Georgia. The governor of Georgia, Brian Kemp, announced during a Thursday press conference at the Georgia State Capitol in Atlanta. The storm brought unprecedented levels of damage across the state. So it, this is not only Augusta, don't get it wrong, but Augusta was hit damn near harder than any other city within Georgia. It says the storm, it says Kemp said resulting in 400, $417 million in damage, though that number is expected to rise substantially, according to the Georgia Emergency Management and Homeland Security Agency, Okay. It says Hurricane Helen has reportedly caused at least 33 fat fatalities across the state. People getting put to death, man. All right. And that, remind, that reminds me of the scripture. Uh, what's that? Deuteronomy 32. I'm pretty sure it's 32 and 39. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. It reads, see now, see now that I, and this is Yahweh. This is the Most High. This is the Heavenly Father. All right. This is that I. It says, see now that I, even I am he. And there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the Lord brought these this this Hurricane Helen that that just took over, and I'm just emphasizing Asheville, North Carolina, and Augusta, Georgia. In this case, in this you know in this video, all right. But it touched it touched it touched, it touched Florida as well. It touched it touched different areas, man. Okay, it brought forth you know. Uh, uncomfortable you know situations predicaments and scenarios to 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 thousands of people okay this is the lord visiting this place man deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 39 it says i kill and i make alive i wound and i heal and the lord has damn sure brought that he brought death he brought forth death 
All right, because when you go to this article in North Carolina, the death toll now tops 100, over 130 people, all right, being put to death. All right, and nobody is, you know, speaking of it. Nobody is, is, is reporting these such things, but it's okay because the, the Hebrew Israelites, the prophets, would do, the, would do that work, man. Okay, and bring forth the understanding of it because we are in the last days. We're in the time of judgment. For it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right. It will, he didn't bring forth too much time to prepare for Hurricane Helen. You might, you might, you might got a one day, two day warning. All right. And that's all you got. All right. The Lord bring, is bringing that. He can bring, he can bring it until you suddenly because what? Is there any, it says, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So it's nothing you could do about it. That's what has you to fear. fear that's what has us to fear. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. This is God we're talking about, the power of the universe, the most high, the heavenly father, all right? The king of king, Lord of Lord, you know what I'm saying? All right, with, with his only begotten son, all right? So let's see what else this article also touches on. It says, Hurricane Helen has reportedly caused at least 33 fatalities across the state, including one first responder. It said a family of three in Chatham County also died, and, that's, and, that's, and this county is referring to Savannah, Georgia, also died from suspected carbon monoxide poisoning after using a gas generator because look, so many people power went out. Ga the, the gas generations were were gone. All right, they had the people were people had to use those gas generators, man. And they were in in this case, this is how you know it's not it's, it's no escaping the, the the judgment of the Lord because I'm thinking of uh, Amos. What's that when it said a serpent bit? Let's see, let's see real quick. Yeah, this is it. Amos chapter five because this family, you know, they, hey, they were, you know, they were. It was a family of three looking to, you know, make a way. You were using a gas generator while, while, while being, you know, during in the midst of Hurricane Helen. But they were judgment still took place. The Lord still put put for judgment. Okay, this is how you, this is how you know it's no escaping the Lord. It's no escaping the Lord. That's why we. That's why. It's, that's why I say wake up. All right. Wake up and realize that we are to, if you are a Negro, Latino, Native American, realize that you are a Hebrew Israelite according to the Bible. That you are under the, that you are now in this predicament suffering under the curses of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai that the Lord has put upon the Hebrew Israelites, his chosen people, due to our disobedience for our punishment. Realize these things because what? If you understand that, you understand your history, or you understand what's going on now, you understand that what? Salvation is also for the Israelites. That we're also going to inherit the kingdom of heaven, which is which is going to involve eternal life, living forever, in uh, rulership over the other nations, the heathen nations that have been oppressing and ruling over us. All right, and have gone too far in certain ways. Okay, you have hope. You now you're now giving yourself hope. That's why I say wake up, man. Events like this should cause you know should should bring forth some type of see should bring even more fear, even more examination. Before a before the ultimate judgment takes place, okay. Let me get Sirach chapter eighteen. Let me get that. Let me get that. Shalaki, I don't think Sirach chapter eighteen. All right, in verse twenty. All right, so this is Sirach chapter eighteen, verse twenty, and it reads: Before judgment, before judgment, examine thyself, and in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Look at that. If you before judgment takes place, and this in this in this in this case, judgment definitely took place. And the ultimate judgment is going to be in the last days, it's going to be thermonuclear missile destruction in the midst of World War III. All right. Which we damn sure don't want. We, we, we it's going to come to pass, but we want we don't want to be taken by it. We don't want to be put to death, all right, whatsoever. We want to we want to be, Lord willing, find mercy in the eyes of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai and be delivered, be beamed up onto the chariots of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Uh, onto the chariots of the Lord, okay. So we're reading, rereading Sirach chapter eighteen, verse twenty. Before judgment, examine thyself in the day of visitation. Thou shalt find mercy. And what is that visitation? That's not your regular, you know, jail therapy visitation. No, this is the Lord bringing forth judgment. That's why I say the Lord has visited these cities as Asheville, North Carolina, and Augusta, Georgia. That's the Lord. The Lord speaks. He doesn't speak how we speak. <laughs> we're, we're sending out the messages for, for the Lord. We're teaching our people what the scriptures say. The Lord speaks through action. All right. And this right here, people, 30, the death toll topping 130 people, that's the Lord speaking. All right. The, the Lord putting out 200,000 Georgians uh, without power, that's the Lord speaking. Okay. 
over 33, you know, fatalities over across the state. That's the Lord speaking, man. Just putting his family of three. All right. In Chatham County, I think that was in Savannah. Yeah. Doing the, doing the power outages. All right. That's the Lord speaking, man. Putting forth that death and destruction. Okay. So let me read this. Let me read this one as well. It says, so as supplies arrive by plane and by mule in North Carolina, as Helen's death toll tops 130. Okay. 130. That's not, that's no small number. It says, it says at least 133 deaths in the six southeastern states have been attributed to the storm that inflicted damage from Florida's Gulf Coast to the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia. All right. It says the toll steadily rose as emergency workers reached areas isolated by collapsed roads, failing infrastructure, and widespread flooding. During a briefing Monday, the White House Homeland Security Advisor, Liz Sherwood Randall, suggested as many as 600 people hasn't been accounted for as of Monday afternoon, saying some might be dead. So that's even, look, so that's even something to keep watch on, all right? Because this is the Lord speaking. This is the Lord speaking, man. So let me also read Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6. Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and with great noise, with storm and tempest and the flame of the devouring fire. So this is the Lord speaking through action. All right. The Lord speaks through action. So when these hurricanes and earthquakes happen, these natural disasters, that's the Lord speaking. All right. And sometimes it doesn't kill anybody, but it puts sometimes but at times it puts thousands of people in, in, in deadly situations. All right. Verse uh, uncomfortable situations. That's the Lord speaking. The Lord is giving opportunity to for our people to repent in these last days. If you if you're able to accept the entirety of the of the gospel, to, and to accept the entirety of Yahweh Bashem Shai and the men of the Lord's messages, man. Okay. Let's see what this says. This is, uh, Isaiah twenty nine. Let me skip down. Isaiah chapter twenty nine, verse. Uh, you know what? Isaiah chapter 20, I'll skip down to this. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, and I'll stop it. You know what? Let me not stop it here because I did also want to grab Amos chapter 5. I meant to read this. This is Amos chapter 5, verse 18. It reads, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And that's what, and that's what we, hey, that's the message that we're telling our people. That's the warning that is going out. That we're in a time of judgment. We're in a time of darkness. It's not light. Okay, the day of the Lord is going to be full of death, full of full of people being, you know, put to death in, in numerous different ways, various different ways, man. Okay, verse nineteen, and I and I bring in, of course, bringing upon this verse because what came to mind was with the family, the family in uh Savannah, all right, the family of three, they died from the the gas generator from breathing from breathing in that but not that carbon monoxide. Okay. So this is Amos chapter 5, verse 19. As if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. See? So it's like it's as if you ran from a lion, you escaped the lion, but a bear got you. Then you 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 ran into a house and leaned on the wall, and, and a serpent got you. It's no running and escaping from the from the hand of Yahweh by Shemyahu Shai. That's the scary part. That like that we just read in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, that none could deliver out of his hand. All right. So the wise thing to do would be to repent and serve the Lord. Fear Yahweh by Shai. All right. Because this, this, this is, you know, more. It's, there's going to be more cases as such. And we want to be protected. All right. We want to be guided through the spirit and for and to, and to be shown, uh, as it says in Sirach chapter 18, verse 20. We want to be given, you know, hopefully find mercy. That the Lord bestows mercy upon us, you know, and it's just that simple. Cause without, cause without mercy, we're good as dead. We're good as dead. It's just that simple, okay. So I just want to come with the reporting on what took place in, in Asheville, North Carolina, and what's happening. It's still going on. This shit is nonstop. All right. And the Lord, and I'm telling, and we're here to tell you that Yahweh, being the Heavenly Father's true name, and Yahweh Shai being His only begotten Son's true name, the Lord have done this, man. All right. The Lord is doing this, okay. Simple as that. So, uh, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying, straight to the point, and also encouraging to you, to those that sincerely listen that's, and that sincerely believe. I want to end up by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. 
Double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Repent, Yahweh Shai is coming back. Repent, Yahweh Shai is coming back. All right, hey, Shalom. Keep the faith. Shalom.